Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another insightful session of the Go Beyond Keynote Speaker Series, exclusively brought to you by RCSI and UCD Malaysia Campus as we celebrate our Silver Jubilee anniversary this year. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Kastri, the PR and Com Specialist at RMC, and I will be your moderator for today. Before we begin, let me take you through a few items so you would know how to navigate around the platform. You should be able to see your attendee interface on your computer desktop on the right hand corner. By default, you will be listening to this session using your computer speaker system and you will be put on listen only mode. You'll have the opportunity to submit text questions to our speaker today by typing them out on the questions tab in the control panel. Please feel free to send in your questions at any time during the event and we will address them during the Q&A session in the end. So without further ado, allow me to introduce our distinguished speaker for today, Associate Professor Dr. Fung Siu Cheng. Dr. Fung obtained her medical degree from University of Science Malaysia in 1994, completed her postgraduate training in pediatrics, and obtained the MRCP in 1998. She's registered with the National Specialist Register, and she worked with the Ministry of Health prior to joining RUMC in the year 2000. She is a Kangaroo Care Advocate and it's, is the founding president of Kangaroo Mother Care Advocates Malaysia Kami, a national NGO that supports Kangaroo Mother Care for low birth weight infants in Malaysia. And to highlight another important achievement of Dr. Fung was when she recently received the prestigious Kenneth Warren Prize and International Award by Cochrane. So I will now pass the session to Dr. Fung to begin her sharing. Over to you, Dr. Fung. Sorry. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Kasturi, for the kind introduction. And thank you, everyone, for joining me here today. Um, let me see. This page was taken off the WHO website. That research has shown that KMC started immediately after birth is critical for saving lives. Although this is referring mainly to babies that are born small, its effects are profound not only for these small babies, but also for their families, and it extends even to normal babies. So what's this uh, kangaroo mother care, or in short, KMC about? I'll be covering it and why it's so special, followed by a KMC video, and what families need to know about KMC. Well, KMC is prolonged skin-to-skin -skin contact with the mother, or actually any family member. Well, baby is placed naked on mother's bare chest like this. Okay? And then a pouch or a wrap or any kind of cloth outside will secure baby to mummy so that mummy is actually free to move about safely. Okay? And this is the kangaroo position. Baby and mother are skin to skin, okay? Skin touching her skin, all right? And the legs are in a frog-like position. Okay, where it's bent at the hips and also the knees. Just like how a baby is in mommy's womb before he's born. It's very comfortable and very calming, both for baby and mommy. So how did KMC start? Well, in 1979 in Colombia, doctors ran out of incubators for their premature babies. And, and babies were dying actually there because they were born too early, premature as in born too early. Because in, in mommy's womb, they are safe. But if they are unfortunately born too early, many of them die because they get infections very easily. Their immune system is not well developed. They also have lots of feeding problems because if they were still in mommy's womb, they don't have to eat yet. Um, they also have a lot of digestion problems because their intestines are not ready to properly digest and absorb food. And therefore, without feeding, they cannot grow well. Not only that, their lungs are not mature, so they have breathing problems. Their brains are also not mature, so many have learning problems later if they don't die. Okay, so therefore, doctors from Colombia search for a solution to help all these premature babies. And they found the answer from kangaroos. Well, what did kangaroos teach them? Well, first let's see how kangaroos are born, right? This is a video showing a baby kangaroo about to be born. This is his legs, okay, about to come out. This is 
just like our premature babies, actually, the skin is very, very thin because in a way, they're actually premature. They're not ready to come out to this world yet. Okay. So when the baby is born, the premature baby kangaroo is born, but they are with mommy. They don't go to incubators. Right? So what the baby does is it will actually climb up mummy's and go into mummy's pouch, the kangaroo pouch, okay, where he will then stay for at least nine months to be able to grow well there. All right. So this is the kangaroo pouch there. Okay. Right. And mummy is giving baby a little hand there. Okay. And now once inside the pouch, baby can start breastfeeding. Okay. This is mummy's uh, nipple actually, which is actually quite much bigger than the baby's mouth. Okay. So baby will be in mummy's pouch. Okay. And then slowly grow together with mummy. And as it grows, it becomes more mature. You can see the skin becoming more like a kangaroo's, okay? And once he's about nine months old, he's ready to come out to the world to have a look and play outside for a while. Okay? So that is how kangaroos are born, okay? Right, so what we have seen is kangaroo babies, also known as joeys, are born very small, just like our premature babies, and they need to be with mummy. And that's what happens to our babies too. They need to be with mummy. Okay. Um, back to the doctors in Colombia, what they found was KMC babies not only lived and survived, KMC actually helped these babies do better. Okay. In fact, some, a lot of them were actually better than incubator babies. So since then, a lot of studies have been done okay, and the results were astounding. Because KMC not only reduced death, it also reduced severe infections among these vulnerable babies, and therefore they could go home faster. Okay? And um, they gained weight faster, they grew faster, mainly because they breastfed better. So in short, the benefits of kangaroo care were so profound that WHO recommends that it's made routine care for babies born small and also the International Pediatric Association has endorsed this. What about COVID? Well, we all know, isn't it? A COVID positive mother is more likely to give birth prematurely before the baby is ready. And recent studies have shown that for, especially in uh, low middle income countries, there is at least a 65 fold increased risk of death without KMC. This is from WHO, which states that a COVID positive mother should be supported to hold a baby skin to skin and be with baby. It is the most cost effective way to protect these small newborns. And this is recently published in the medical journal. It is projected that more than 100,000 lives can be saved with KMC. So before I go on, I'd like to stress that this is not KMC. Okay. See the layer of clothing here that separates mummy from baby. There are actually two layers of clothing here. Okay. And his legs are actually straight, not bent. So KMC is like this, where baby is skin touching skin with mother. And of course, his legs should be bent at the hips and also at the knees. So how does something as simple as KMC produce such a profound impact? It's because one of the main reasons is because kangaroo care actually increases breastfeeding. How? Well, the skin to skin contact, especially around mother's chest, will stimulate mummy to produce a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin is also known as a love hormone and is a powerful hormone that produces breast milk. So with kangaroo care, mummy produces lots more milk compared to a mummy that is separated from her baby. Now, not only does mummy produce more milk, she will be more likely to know when baby is hungry. I mean, how do you know a baby is hungry and wants to feed? I think all of us know this one. When he cries, 
cries loudly. But did you know it's actually very late, a very late cue. Meaning that when a baby cries like this, he's already very, very hungry and maybe too angry to feed anymore. Let's learn some baby body language here. All right. This is what a baby will first do when he's hungry. He just probably turns his head, maybe uh, lick his lips, okay, uh, stir a bit. Okay. If he can talk, he will say this, Mommy, you should feed me now. I'm hungry. If you miss this, because maybe you were busy, you didn't notice, all right, then um, baby would likely just fall back to sleep. Okay. But when he wakes up, he will be even hungrier. Now he starts to stretch even more, okay? He has got much more movements and he might even put his hand into his mouth, okay? If he can speak, he's gonna say, mommy, you better feed me now, right? And then if you actually miss that and then you didn't see it, he will go back to sleep, yes. But when he wakes up this time, he is going to be not only extremely hungry, he will be extremely angry. He will start to cry loudly. This is the one that we know. Lah. He will move a lot. He might even turn red crying, okay? And if he can talk, he's going to say, Mommy, why did you feed me just now? I'm not too angry to eat, right? And a lot of time is then needed to calm him down so that he will then be in the mood to eat, all right? But you know, babies, they might like children sulk and not want to feed, okay? uh, like the Malay say, uh, mara joke, right? a very difficult time for both mommy and baby. So it's very important to feed babies the moment they're hungry, especially for premature babies, because premature babies, unlike term babies who can scream and move a lot when they're hungry, premature babies don't have the energy to do all these. They might not even have the energy to cry. They, a lot of them can only maybe just move their mouth or lick their lips when they're hungry. And that's it. Very, very subtle signs. So what happens if the baby is an, incub is an in incubator? All right? The nurses might be too busy to see the baby's feeding cues. And the baby ends up not being fed. But even if the nurses saw the baby's feeding cues, by the time the nurse calls the mummy and gets the mummy to come over to feed, baby might have fallen back asleep and will not be able to feed again. All right. That's why kangaroo care is so important. On mommy's chest, mommy can easily see when the baby starts licking his lips or like here, putting his hand to his mouth. Okay. And when mommy sees that, she can very easily shift the baby into a breastfeeding position so that baby can start breastfeeding immediately. And for babies like this who are too premature to even start sucking. Kangaroo care allows them to learn by licking on the nipples. Okay, it, it's practice. Okay. Some, this is something a baby in an incubator cannot do. Therefore, he will be more ready to start breastfeeding compared to babies who don't have kangaroo care. And not only that, baby's breast licks helps stimulate mommy to produce more breast milk so that she will have enough supply for the baby. With kangaroo care, baby also feels like he's back in mommy's womb. His heartbeat and his breathing is much, much more stable. Therefore, he sleeps much better so that his body, will, and more importantly, actually his brain, will grow much, much better. Okay? And on top of that, baby's immunity is also strengthened because mommy and baby will be colonized with mommy's normal flora, okay? Normal flora are the good germs on mommy's skin. When baby and mommy are skin to skin, mommy's good germs will get to baby's skin and not only protect the baby from infection, it will also have a very important influence on the baby's health in the future. This is how beautiful it is. The skin to skin contact, so there is much more breast milk production and mommy can recognize the feeding cues early. And therefore there will be much more breastfeeding. And breast, feed, breast milk we all know has all the protective antibodies to prevent baby from getting infections and also the correct nutrients 
to help baby grow so he doesn't fall sick easily. Well, if he doesn't fall sick easy and he can feed better, of course, he grows better. And if he grows better, of course, he gets to go home earlier. And when babies get to go home earlier, there is less crowding in the wards. We all know, isn't it? Crowding increases infection. Just like now COVID, we tell people to space out and not to be crowded in a place. So yes, if babies can go home earlier, there will be less crowding. If less crowding, there will be back to less infection and back to, you know, if the baby grows well, also the baby will have less infection. Less infection means the baby is healthier. And of course, when you're healthier, you have better appetite. You can feed better. If you feed better, then mother will produce even more milk. And then this beautiful cycle just goes on and on. And ultimately, there will be less, not only less infections for baby, but death among these babies will be much, much reduced. Let's watch a video on how to do kangaroo care. Like this is baby here, nothing, not wearing anything in front. And of course, mommy is also not wearing anything in front. All right. The baby is placed skin to skin on mommy. Okay. And what she has here is actually a, a pouch or a wrap okay, to secure it so that mommy doesn't have to hold on to baby um, too tightly or, or too worried that the baby will fall. Okay. Even if you don't have a pouch, you can still do skin to skin like this. Okay. Uh, the, if it's a first time mommy, then you need someone to help you like this nurse here helping mommy. But once she gets the hang of it, she can actually do it by herself. So they've placed the baby into the wrap. Okay. And that's the baby there. Okay. Because you position him nicely, the legs will be in a frog like position. Okay. Right, and um, once the baby is securely inside, the baby will be very comfortable and mommy can go about that. The baby is now very, very comfortable here. Okay, and mommy can go about doing anything she likes actually. Generally, she can walk around the house. She can watch the other children. She can read a book, surf the internet, watch TV, anything, right? So that's mommy with baby. And I think she will be getting up soon just to go for a walk. Yes, there. Mommy is walking with the baby and you can see how comfortable baby is and you can see the beautiful bonding mommy has together with baby. Okay, so I'm now coming to what do families need to know about kangaroo care, especially the daddies, right? First of all, you will notice that I have started to say kangaroo care and not kangaroo mother care because studies have shown that kangaroo care can be done by any family member not just the mother, okay? Uh, and its benefits are just as good, right? So if you look here, we have here a pair of twins born prematurely in Penang Hospital. One has got kangaroo mother care, KMC, and this one has got KFC, right? Not Kentucky Fried Chicken, but kangaroo father care. Okay? This is another pair of twins, okay? One has KFC, and this one has kangaroo brother care. It's just so heartwarming, isn't it? To see the family bonding so well together. Here are more parents doing uh, kangaroo care. There are two proud KFCs here. And this mother here is doing KMC for her premature baby that is still connected to a machine to help her baby breathe. Okay, the next thing we all need to know is that to get maximum benefits for kangaroo care, it should be done at least six hours a day. Of course, any kangaroo care is better than nothing, but if you want to get maximum benefits, then at least six hours a day. And you know what people tell me when I tell them six hours, but this is the reaction they get. I get, you know, what? Six hours? Ah, so long ah. They got time, all right. So this is what I generally hear from parents. The first time they hear about that six hours. But actually, you don't need to set aside special time for kangaroo care. You can do it while, you know, doing, uh, you know, hanging clothes, uh, reading a book, as I said, watching your other children, uh, surfing the internet, watch TV, anything. Of course, there are some activities uh, where kangaroo care might not be appropriate, like um, when you go to the toilet, then maybe it's uh, better that you let someone else have an opportunity to do kangaroo care, maybe pass over to daddy or grandma or uncle. Let someone else get the chance to do kangaroo care. Okay, 
Well, I've been telling you also all this while how kangaroo care benefits preterm babies, premature babies. What are babies that are born term, normal size? Can kangaroo care be done for them? Well, look at this photo. Okay. I think it says it all. This is a good size term baby. Do you think it's going to benefit baby and mommy? Of course it would. The benefits may not be as profound as what you would find for premature babies, but baby is definitely calmer, baby sleeps better, there will be improved breastfeeding experience, and all these are important not only for physical growth, body growth, but also for brain growth. Okay? There's also this colonization of baby with mother's good germs, um, and then um, because of the breastfeeding, he gets sick less often because he has better immunity, and uh, there is also this beautiful bonding between mommy and baby or actually anyone who does kangaroo care with the baby. What if the mother has COVID? Okay, so the same rule applies. This is from the WHO. Okay, mommy can do kangaroo care, but will wear a mask and will wash hands before and after touching the baby. And I'm um, just sharing some of the things I hear from parents, okay? Uh, when they do kangaroo care, you know, like this one, baby feels so calm and comfortable. I wish I had done this earlier. So a lot of parents tell us that they wish they had known earlier and had done this earlier. This is from a, a, a mother. This is what she said. It warms my heart to see my husband doing KMC so happily, right? So it's very, very heartwarming. Remember, giving birth is very stressful. And kangaroo care is the anti-stress medicine for both mom and baby, and also, of course, daddy. And you know something? Ms. Kasturi, who is our moderator of our talk tonight, is actually a kangaroo care mother herself. You know, maybe we should hear from her, an actual kangaroo care mother, how she felt about kangaroo care. Ms. Kasturi, would you mind sharing? Hi, thank you so much, Dr. Fu. So uh, the one thing that I would always want to highlight and continue to cherish after doing kangaroo care is the beautiful bond and closeness that was formed between me and my baby, especially when he looks into my eyes and gives me that warm smile. So I never had that skin-to-skin -skin contact right after his birth, and I really felt left out because he was admitted into NICU. But now, after practicing the kangaroo mother care, not only we have formed an amazing bond as a family, I've also become more confident about my ability to care for him. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Phil. Thank you, Ms. Kasturi, for sharing that. It was beautiful. Right. Um, the only thing I want to say, though, is um, unfortunately, not many people have heard about kangaroo care. And this is what some a lot of people tell me. I, I wish someone had told me about KMC earlier so that I will be more prepared for it. I mean, we, we don't know when people get premature birth, isn't it? And, and premature births are very, very stressful. So if, if people know about this earlier, even before birth, it would have been so helpful. And as I also say, KMC is not just for premature babies, it can also benefit term babies a lot, like what you saw with the earlier picture just now, right? And that's why an NGO um, called Kami, the kangaroo advocates, can, kangaroo advocate mother, sorry, kangaroo mother care advocates Malaysia, all right, was formed to spread awareness in Malaysia about kangaroo care. Right, people ask me then, how long can we do kangaroo care for? Okay, well, the recommendation is at least until the baby is 2.5 kilos or until the baby doesn't want it anymore. So if you want to look at this video here, yep, the kangaroo is out, jumping about, having fun, all right? Okay, does he need it anymore? Your mommy says, yep, you want to try and play longer? Well, he's having a somersault there, having a lot of fun. If he thinks you need it, he'll go back to the pouch. If not, he will leave the pouch, all right? So let's look at this kangaroo. Does he need more kangaroo care? Oh, yes, he does, all right? So this kangaroo needs more, all right? But later, he will not want to go back, all right? So we humans too let our babies decide when he's got enough. So when he's got enough, he will be very, very squirmy if, when you put him in. He won't be as comfortable anymore and you know that's the time you can actually stop kangaroo care, right? 
But these are three kangaroo cat families, all right? This uh, lovely little boy here was a tiny 1.4 kilo baby when he was born. And mummy here was a KMC champion. She helped all the mothers in the ward do KMC. Super dad here is a KFC champion. Very, very supportive of mummy. And this is Miss Kasturi's uh, family. You can see why now she says the bonding is so, so beautiful. All right, she and her son, despite being separated at birth because the baby was sick, um, has such a beautiful bond. Right, so uh, in summary, kangaroo, mother, kangaroo care actually is prolonged skin to skin contact between the baby and any family member. Okay, take note, it's not baby in baby carriers, okay, where there is a layer of clothing separating baby from mommy. That's not kangaroo care, okay. The leg should be in frog like posture. It's very important for baby's health and development. It promotes family bonding, but a lot of awareness is needed. All right. So I would like to express my sincere thanks to all the parents and also the Kangaroo Mother Care Foundation Philippines and the Sea Urchin Project team for the photographs and for some of the slides used in this presentation. And many, many thanks to all of you all for joining me here this evening. Feel free to ask questions during the Q&A session. And if you're interested to support KMC in Malaysia, Kami will welcome you to contact them at this address. We really need a lot of um, advocates to uh, help spread the awareness. You can also post future questions you might have on KMC to me at this address. Right, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Fung, for that really insightful and helpful talk on kangaroo care. So we will now proceed with the Q&A session. And um, I would like to also drop a gentle reminder to our audience to continue sending in your questions and we will uh, address them all now. So let's take a first question here. This is from Rambu Sada. I'm going to the confinement home. Can I do KMC there? Um. Actually, I mean, why not, isn't it? Okay, um, there is this thing about confinement homes. Uh, a lot of mothers actually say, I paid you all so much, you take care of my baby uh, because I want value for money. So I'm not sure, actually. Um, will, um, will that be something that is advisable? Because you're now separating baby from mommy. And uh, when that happens, um, it's, it's not in the best interest of baby. So, you know, when, when we think too much, yeah, I've spent money, I better get my money worth back. I'm not sure if that's what your baby wants from you, actually. So, um, yeah, kangaroo care, of course, you can do it. It's best, actually, especially now with COVID, I would strongly suggest that baby is with you rather than baby be in a nursery, okay, where, you know, one, uh, you know, confinement center staff takes care of 10, 20, 10 15 babies, uh, and you don't know where, how easy infections can spread there. So if you can actually have baby with you in your own room, I think that's the safest place uh, you can have, you, your baby can be. All right, so yeah, I don't see why not you can do it in, a, why, why you can't do it in a confinement center. All right, uh, let's move on with the next question. This is from TC Fung. Um, what do I need to buy for KMC? Do you need to buy anything? Actually, KMC, you don't need to buy anything. Um, it's just, you, you don't need anything. You can actually do it with a very long towel or a long, um, what shall I say? Like a very long piece of cloth, uh, like a bed sheet, let's say, or a long blanket. I start to wrap the baby so that, you know, baby is more secure and you don't feel so scared that the baby will fall. Um, but anything to keep the baby with you so that you can do it for, well, we hope for at least six hours. Uh, but bear in mind again, as I say, any KMC is better than none. The only clause I want to add to that is we try not to do KMC, let's say for 15 minutes, and then you take baby out. And then you do another 15 minutes and you take baby out. Because when you start doing PMC, the baby will fall asleep. And we want the baby to have that very good quality of sleep. So at least I would say once you start KMC, let the baby at least have one cycle of sleep. Once he wakes up, only you will take him out. You don't put him in. The moment he falls asleep, you take him out. Um, then that will defeat the whole purpose of uh, kangaroo care. All right, so you don't need to buy anything special, but yeah, certain hospitals and all, they might have certain wraps 
um, to um, to help secure the baby. Yeah, you can also contact Kami. They also have uh, they can give you suggestions on where and what to get, what wraps to get. All right. Okay, thanks, Mr. So, um, the next one is by Kathleen. Will baby become clingy if I start to do KMC? Yeah, that, that's what a lot of mothers ask me. Uh, I know I don't want my baby to be clingy to me afterwards. Uh, you know, and then he will cry a lot when I when you know when I'm not around. Okay, I think it's a matter of perspectives. Uh, I mean, there's no easy answer to that. But what I would say is, if the baby is with mommy most of the time, of course he loves you. And you want that, isn't it? You don't want a baby to not want you. Okay. So we have a lot of parents who say when the child is older, you know, you're, you're, you're a bit older, they say, how come my, my child is not close to me? Eh? Well, it, it comes from the beginning. If you separated them from you, of course, your child will not be close to you. And later on, you know, when the child has problems and all, they might not come back to you. You want that security. And the other thing I find with a lot of KMC babies is they actually feel more secure because at the most vulnerable period, mommy is there for them. So they, their mental health, um, their emotional development is much, much stronger. And hopefully that translates to when they are older, they feel more secure and therefore they, um, you know, they, they actually do much better in this world. Um, I think, let me see, uh, there was uh, someone who brought this up also earlier on about clinginess. But if you look at it, well, clingy is not the end of the world, isn't it? They cling, they cry and then they cry for a while and that's it. They won't cry forever. But if the baby is not with you, he falls sick. Isn't that worse? Would you rather have a well, clingy baby in what comma or baby who is always sick? Well, it's a choice um, for you to make. So I, I personally will not be worried about a clingy baby, but I would rather have a baby who actually grows up emotionally secure, strong, stable, um, to be able to meet life later. All right. And uh, okay, I think uh, this one is how I like. I think he missed uh, the definition of kami. Do you want to repeat for Mr. How? All right. Uh, let me see uh, if I could. Um, could um, I um, move my slides again? I can't move my slides already. Kami stands for Kangaroo Advocates, okay. Ka Kangaroo Mother Care Advocates Malaysia. It's an NGO, yeah. it's a non government um, organization that is formed. Uh, to help create awareness for um, Malaysians, actually, generally, um, so that more people know about kangaroo care. And if people got problems or questions, they can write there and um, we will advise them on what to do. So um, I'm trying to share back my slides early on, but I don't seem to be able to move my slides. So go back. Oh, yeah, it's here. Right. So that's the website. Uh, if anyone needs to ask more questions after this or would like to help us, uh, spread awareness about kangaroo care, please write to this, um, um, to Kami. All right. And uh, moving on with the next question, this is by Ms. Nitya Darshini. How long can we uh, kangaroo mother care a term baby? Yeah, I think back to that, just like that kangaroo there, we let baby decide. Um, if it's a term baby, I mean, as I said, the the effects are not as profound, but yes, there's still effects. So initially, the baby might be very comfortable. He'll love it. He'll be very quiet. He sleeps very well. And as he grows older, especially if he's been so secure with mom, they will want to explore the world. They don't want to be back in that wrap anymore. So if you find that your yeah, baby is very agitated when you put him back in the wrap, uh, then yep, he's telling you, mommy, I've got enough of kangaroo care. I want to be a little boy or a girl already. So let, let baby decide. I think different babies, uh, but term babies, remember some term babies are born very small. Okay, they might be term, but they are actually very, very small. Okay, and, and it's these small, but term babies that might require kangaroo care for a longer time. I hope I answered that question. Yes, and uh, another one, I think uh, Miss Ang, if I'm not mistaken, good evening, the Dr. Fu, for term baby, the pouch is too tight to hold the baby. They, I think she's currently using saru. That okay? Yeah, that's fine. Anything, anything, anything that you know, um, so that the baby and mommy can be together for a long time. But as I said, term babies they might not want to be in so long or so, isn't it? So if they are squirming, they're not happy. Yeah, well, 
he's telling you he's got enough of uh, kangaroo care. You can actually stop already. Okay, like, like that boy you saw just now, isn't it? those, those uh, boys that you saw in the family photos, okay, none of them will, have, will want kangaroo care. And I, I think uh, Miss Kasturi, even your baby has got enough of kangaroo care already, right? Yeah, doesn't want any more. <laughs> yeah, okay, they will tell you, right? They will tell you. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. Yes, okay, uh, Dr. Phil, there's one question from Miss Juliana. Um, mm -hmm. If the mother has stoma and is not confident to do kangaroo mother care because they are afraid uh, the, the, the baby might uh, get the infection from the stoma, what is the what would be your advice for the mothers to do kangaroo mother care? A stoma, I'm assuming that um, she has a surgery for um, something where the, in, for the intestines, Am I right? I'm assuming that's the thing. Um, okay, so what that one is a bit more difficult, I agree, because um, you are talking about um, things coming out into the back. It might be contaminated uh, because it's not the it's not the normal flora anymore. This one, could you write to uh, Kami and let me understand more closely, you know, how the condition, I think this one would be very difficult to answer without actually seeing where the stoma is. Or what the mother actually has. Um, mm -hmm. So can I ask you to write to Kami and then we will um, we, we will brainstorm and see how best to help the mother and the baby. Yes, I hope uh, Ms. Juliana is still listening. So the email address is on the screen right now. You can uh, share this and then uh, Kami will get back to you with the best solution. Right. And then yeah. let's move on. Can I do kangaroo mother care if my baby is yellow? Yes, yes, yes definitely. Yeah, so uh, if the baby is yellow, so I think uh, also known as jaundice, a uh, uh, jaundice baby. So if the baby is yellow, no no reason why you cannot do kangaroo care. In fact, if I look at the chat, the, the question, there's another one, how to do phototherapy if mother is um, kangaroo care. All right, so it depends on your hospital. All right, I know in India and in Philippines and also in Sweden, they now have units where the mother and the baby actually do phototherapy together, okay? Um, but in Malaysia, it's not available yet. So to answer the first question, can I do kangaroo care if the baby is yellow? Definitely, if, especially if it's mild jaundice, mild yellowness, without the need for phototherapy. Phototherapy is that blue light that the babies are put under if they are very, very yellow. So the answer to that question is definite yes, okay? Um, to the question by Choi C, uh, I think about how to do under phototherapy. Then uh, in Malaysia, it might be a bit more complex. So I suppose um, under the photo now you still can't do, but once the baby is out of photo, then you can do. Um, and I think that that's the option at the moment. Uh. Um, not the best, but still can be done like Miss Kasturi was separated from a baby for 14 days. Uh, and yet, uh, she went on to do kangaroo care and had a wonderful bond after that. Okay, thanks, Dr. Fung. So, Dr. Fung has answered two of the questions. Uh, my baby is three months old. Can I do kangaroo mother care? This is uh, by okay. Charlie. I'm not sure because uh, let that baby decide. I mean, uh, again, three months old was the baby born premature. Okay, so if the baby was born premature and is now three months old, but the baby is, uh, well, especially if the baby is less than 2.5 kilograms, then definitely yes. Okay, I was in another talk uh, on Saturday about this and a mother actually um, was separated from a baby for the last uh, six months, all right? And uh, because the baby was premature, but no, the baby was still less than 2.5 kilos and was uh, doing kangaroo care after that. So, um, I, I'm not sure whether the, this three month old, what, the, what is the size of the baby, whether he was born term or not. So if it's a term, uh, three months old, very good size, uh, maybe baby will tell you she doesn't want it anymore. Okay. But if it's a small baby, okay, especially if it was preterm, then definitely you can try. I hope I answered that question too. Okay. Uh, yep. Thanks, Dr. Fu. And then uh, let's move on with the next question. Can skin to skin contact be done straight after a caesarean section? Right. Okay. If you look at WHO's recommendation, actually, yes. Okay. They are moving to move the new recommendation to do skin to skin 
immediately even after a cesarean section. So they have the, uh, in Sweden it's already practiced. I don't have time actually today to show you the video of how they did it. They just section the baby and they put the mother skin to skin immediately. Even in Malaysia, a lot of places are doing skin to skin, but not kangaroo care uh, immediately after cesarean section. So I think we are evolving there. And I'm sure one day, hopefully, we will move towards uh, actually not just skin to skin, but kangaroo care immediately after cesarean. But having said that, again, we have to see. Uh, is mother actually, uh, you have to see what the reason for cesarean is. If the mother is actually very sick, then of course, uh, she might not be in the best condition due to kangaroo care. But if it's uh, the mother is otherwise not very, not sick actually, or there might be a reason, maybe the baby was too big, or maybe uh, you know the baby was too premature uh, and, and there were some complications during normal delivery and they had to end up with caesarean section, then there is no reason why you cannot do kangaroo care immediately after caesarean section. WHO's latest recommendation is KMC immediately after birth because the study has shown that it, uh, I think more than 150,000 lives can be saved that way. Yep. Uh Thanks, Dr. Fung. If you look at the questions, uh, question pane, there are more questions. Hi, this is from uh, Irene. I would like to know if it's safe for the baby if I fell asleep during KMC. Right. It's a very good question. Actually, if I can show my slides, I can show you what is there in WHO. I hope I can show my slides. Uh, there's one more there. This is the one from WHO. Actually, you can actually do KMC while sleeping. The only thing is, especially in Malaysia, where people are not very used to this yet, maybe it's a good idea if you are actually sleeping, have someone around so that you know you can keep an eye on you and baby. So do not sleep uh, with doing KMC alone. Have a family member with you uh, when you're doing KMC and you sleep. So the, sh the, the, the complete answer is, is it safe? Yes, if a family member is with you as you do KMC. Mm. Thanks, Dr. Fung. And uh, another one from Bibiana Tio. For phototherapy, can you use a billy blanket wrapped around baby inside the pouch? Can we use a billy blanket? Um, that's a good question, actually. Yeah, I don't see why not. But the uh, billy blanket will be wrapped at the back of the baby, not between the mummy and baby. Because if it's between mummy and baby, then, um, what do you say? Uh, then there's no skin to skin contact anymore. Then it's not kangaroo care anymore, right? Um, again, that one also depends on how high the jaundice is. But if, if, the, if the baby's uh, jaundice levels are very, very high, then I'm not sure if the billy blanket alone is enough, whether you need a, a more intensive phototherapy. So I think that, that question again cannot be answered um, just offhand like that without knowing more details. A very, very mild jaundice. Again, remember, very, very mild jaundice, actually, you might not even need phototherapy. Let your doctor decide. If your doctor thinks that he needs uh, phototherapy, then you might want to ask, can I do kangaroo care with Billy Blanket? I think your doctor will be the best person to advise uh, because it's individualized for every baby. Okay. And uh, yes, uh, I think Ms. Chai Peng Lim would like to add on that her baby experiences much less gastroesophageal reflux in KMC due to the upright position and are very much comfortable sleeping longer with less centrifugal reflex and less regurgitation. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, what uh, what she's trying to say here is, you know, that there is less, you know, reflux. Babies uh, bringing up milk, you know, you know, a lot of babies they bring up milk very easily. Uh, but especially for preterms, if you lie them flat on the bed, then they are more easy. Uh, they easily reflux. That means they, they bring up milk easily and very easily. Also, they choke on their own milk. But with kangaroo care, baby is upright, so the reflux incident, the, the reflux chance is less. Okay. Of course, the baby, as what she says, is more comfortable, sleeps longer, because if you sleep longer, brain development is better as well. Um, I have actually, I've got studies that show that the brain waves, when the baby is sleeping with kangaroo care, is very different from a baby that is sleeping separated from mother. Okay. Uh, it's very, those that are separated from mother, the brain waves are very chaotic very very uh, irregular but if the baby is doing kangaroo care there is a lot of deep sleep which is very important for brain growth 
um, for these babies. So, um, well, uh, one, later when we've got chance, I might share those those um, um, videos with you. Okay. All right. Uh, some, another question is: Does changes in contact with AMC have an impact on postnatal depression? Yes, definitely, definitely. You remember the oxytocin hormone that I said? So when you have skin to skin, okay, mommy not only produces milk, the oxytocin, as I said, is a love hormone. Okay, It's a very calming hormone Okay, which uh, brings mother joy or anybody, or even daddy for that matter. Okay, Anybody who does skin to skin with the baby actually gets a surge of these hormones and more so for mothers. Okay, uh, And yes, we know after delivery, after the, giving birth to a baby is very stressful okay, and they are very prone, very easily gets uh, you know, post-delivery uh, depression. But if you do skin to skin because of that abundance in that oxytocin hormone, the mother feels much more calm, depression is less. Uh, and yes, I have got papers also to show you know, how it reduces depression among mothers after delivery. Yes, thanks, Dr. Pong. So we have more questions coming up in the lane. Um, this is from Ms. Ruzaini. Um, Hi, I want to ask a question. If mother got skin problem like cellulitis or ECT, I'm not sure what was that, can mother still do KMC? All right, that one again is a bit difficult to answer without looking at how the mother is. All right, if the mother actually has got open wounds, that means uh, the skin is actually inflamed, uh, especially if there is redness and the skin feels hot, she's got fever with uh, you know the skin like that and there's pus, then maybe not. Okay, because now the germs on mommy's skin is not normal flora anymore. It's germs that are actually, um, how shall I say, um, not good for the mother. All right, and then therefore will not be good for the baby either. Now I'm talking about cellulitis as in the skin infection. All right, if a mother has just some simple fever, cough and cold, not a problem. All right, because that's not on the skin. Okay, and mommy, if she has any infection, mommy will start to produce antibodies. And when baby is with mommy, getting mommy's breast milk more, the mommy's uh, antibodies will protect the baby. All right, just like COVID. Right, that's why we say COVID is also not a problem. You can do it because we know that newborn babies cannot get the vaccine. We cannot vaccinate a baby against COVID. So where do they get the vaccine? They get the vaccine from mommy's milk, especially if mommy has already been vaccinated. So I hope all of you all here uh, are vaccinated already, especially if you're pregnant, right? Because your breast milk will then have the antibodies to protect your baby. But back to uh, Ms. Rosaini, um, maybe you want to write into us to come in again and um, we might be able to advise you better that way. All right. Okay. Uh, another one is from Mr. Shami. How does the baby know when it doesn't need Andrew care anymore? What are the physiological or developmental processes that bring the baby to that stage? Mm, very interesting question. I think the baby will just know. It's just like the same thing. Like when will the baby know I can walk? Uh, when will the baby know I can talk? When they, they come to that, uh, they just know. So. After a certain stage, okay, baby will want to explore the world. He will not want to just cling on to mommy anymore. Uh, and they will let you know because you put him close, they might want it for a little while, then they will start squirming and they want to go out. Okay, So when that happens, you know, yeah, baby doesn't want it anymore. But again, bear in mind, um, when I say this, um, newborns, especially if they're pram, when you first put them, they might not be comfortable also. Okay? Mainly for prams, uh, premature babies, they might not be comfortable. The baby might need some time to get to know this is called kangaroo care uh, and then calm down. So, you know, you don't give up just because you put the baby. And if you saw that video early on, you saw that the first thing time the baby goes into mommy, he was crying. Okay? Don't get scared and don't say, oh, cannot do, the baby doesn't want it, no. Uh. Um, let the baby, just give it a try. And uh, yep, baby should calm down after about five to 10 minutes and then be very comfortable like what you saw in the video. If that's the case, you know baby wants it, okay? But if the baby continues to cry and cry and cry and cry and cry and then the baby is telling you, I don't need this. Okay. And uh, another one, uh, this is Wayne Kong. Thanks Dr. Fung for the informative sharing. How about babies on oxygen or non-invasive ventilation? Right, a great question again. Okay, so uh, if you look at WHO's guideline, okay, previously, 
it says that when babies are stable, as long as the baby is stable, premature babies especially, if they're stable, that means uh, the blood pressure is normal and all, then you can start kangaroo care. Even if the baby is on ventilation, okay, not, not non-invasive, even if it's intubated, as in the baby is actually got a tube to go into the lungs, okay, you can still do kangaroo care. But the latest guideline, which will be out soon, okay, I, I just attended a conference and that's the, the latest, they said they will be coming out soon, maybe in the next month, you will see that WHO has changed its guidelines. It says now, the moment the baby is born, without waiting for stabilization, kangaroo care can start. Right, so we are, we are waiting for the definitive uh, guideline coming out. But uh, this is just to say babies on oxygen, definitely, yes, you can do kangaroo care. Non-invasive ventilation, yes. Even ven invasive ventilation, as of now, as long as the baby is stable, yes. But soon, I think we will get a guideline saying even without waiting for stabilization, the baby will go straight to kangaroo care the moment he's born. We are talking about premature babies here. All right. All right. Uh, thanks, Dr. Fu. Let's, let's take another two more questions, maybe. Um, can I use just skin-to-skin -skin contact instead of the wrap or pouch for my premature baby? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, the whole idea is skin-to-skin. -skin. You don't need a pouch, you don't need a wrap, okay? The only reason why we suggested a wrap or a pouch is if you were to do it for six hours, doing kangaroo care, just holding with your bare hands on the baby can be very, very tiring and can be very, very stressful for mother also. You, you might be scared, you drop the baby. I know. So how long can you actually hold a baby uh, without being tired? So if you have a wrap, if you again remember that video I showed, the mother was very comfortable, you know you're secure, you know the baby is secured in the wrap, you can walk around, you can do things, you can let go of your hand um, occasionally without being scared that the baby will be uh, falling off. Okay. So the, answer to, the short answer to that is yes. Okay. The only problem is you might not be able to do it for long hours. So we suggest a minimum of six hours. Uh, that will be very, very tiring. Again, if I can just go back very quickly, six hours doesn't mean you have to do six hours continuously. You can break it up, maybe two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, two hours at night. Okay. Or you want to do it continuous, six hours also can. Okay. Uh, the only thing is do not Bring baby in, out, in, out too frequently. I mean, minimum one hour before you take the baby out. Okay? And in India, the latest one, which the latest study done by WHO in India, uh, mummies were doing it for 20 hours. All right. So again, when people first hear, wow, six hours so long. Just imagine Indian mummies are doing it for 20 hours and not because they are forced to, they actually want to. All right. So, uh, yep, it's achievable. 20 hours. Right. Uh, okay, Dr. Fung, one last question. My baby is very premature in the hospital for over six months and he's going, going home for the first time, maybe next week. And I have not carried him before. Can I still do KMC? Oh, yeah. This will be something like what I described where I had an, uh, another... Um, another session with another group of parents. So yes, that, that one was also something like this, okay? Not seeing the baby. Um, and I think the short answer to that is yes. Okay, Miss Kasturi will be a vouch for that. She didn't meet her baby until, well, it was just two weeks. But yeah, it's, it's great catch up time, I think. Um, yeah, baby will be missing all of you all. Uh, and bonding, this will be the best way to bond with the baby after six months away. Remember bonding and all, it's not just bonding for emotional growth. It actually develops the brain as well. So there are a lot of parts in the brain that are very important for emotional health that doesn't develop very well if baby is separated from mommy. In fact, there is a term, I think, that uh, when I went for a conference not too long ago, they call it separation toxicity. That means it's poisonous to separate the baby from mommy. And that's why WHO is recommending even with COVID babies and mommy should be together where possible. Okay, so for this mummy who is unfortunate to be separated from baby because of various reasons that we cannot control, the moment the baby is home, then yes, do try and see whether you can get kangaroo care on board, especially if the baby is still small. Okay, usually, um, I think they, if the baby was very premature, even on discharge, the baby will, will still be very small. And in those instances, yes, kangaroo care will be very, very beneficial, not only for baby, but also for mommy, daddy, and the rest of the family. Okay, thanks, Dr. Fung. And with that, uh, let's uh, 
wrap up the session for today. Thank you so much, Dr. Fung, for your time today. And uh, to our audience, if you have any other questions about kangaroo mother care, kangaroo care, please feel free to email to persatuankami at gmail.com and get your questions answered. So, Dr. Fung, any last words to our audience before we end? Yeah, if I could just ask all of you, please spread the word about kangaroo care because not many people know about this. So if you can share, I mean, it, it works for term babies, especially the moment they are born. Like, don't, don't wait until they're three months old. Maybe they don't want it anymore. But yeah, the moment they are born, do try kangaroo care even if the baby is term. Uh, definitely for preterm babies, uh, know about this or share with any family member whom you know is going to deliver. Tell them about the beauty of kangaroo care. And hopefully, of course, nobody gets a premature birth, but still it's good to know beforehand. And uh, yeah, join Kami, please. We need support. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Fung. And uh, audience, with that, we have reached the end of today's event. If you have any other questions, you can also email us at inquiry at rcsiucd.edu.my to get your questions answered. And uh, once you leave the session, you will receive a short survey on today's keynote session. And we would appreciate if you would complete that and provide your feedback. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 hours with a link to view a recording of today's event. And finally, on behalf of RCSI New City Malaysia campus and our speaker, Dr. Phil, we would like to thank you for joining us today. And uh, we will see you next month in our final session of the keynote speaker series. So till then, take care and stay safe, everyone. Goodbye. Bye, Dr. Phil. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.